allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a number of public hearings tonight. Um, the first public hearing we're going to have is a variance from development standard for paving and curbing of entire parking lot experience at 2340 North Progress Road. Does anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns? Alan, can I make a correction on that? Yeah. It's not the entire parking lot. It's partial. Partial. Yes. Okay. Seeing nobody have any questions or concerns, I will take a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor of closing this public hearing, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. Opening the next one, a special exception to run a business out of home located at 1018 East Lakeshore Drive. Does anybody in the audience have any comments, complaints, or concerns? Seeing none, I will take a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Those in favor of closing this public hearing, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. This public hearing is now closed. The next one, opening this public hearing for variance for development standards for front yard setback at 706 West Gaston Drive. Does anybody have any comments, complaints, or concerns about this one? Hearing none, I will accept a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor of closing this public hearing say, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. The next one, opening this public hearing for a special exception to operate a warehouse type business in a B2 zoning at 1927 North Greensburg Crossing. Does anybody have any comments, complaints, or concerns about this one? I have a question. Greensburg Crossing, is that where the old uh, tractor supply was? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've got no problems with that. What's your name, sir? Ron Weston. I will take a motion to close this public hearing. I'll move. Those in favor of closing this public hearing, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. And opening the last public hearing, variance from development standards for paving and curbing of the entire parking lot at 1530 West Veterans Way. Is that again a, a partial, sir? Yeah, they want Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments, complaints, or concerns about this one? Hearing none, I will take a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Those in favor of closing this public hearing say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. We are now closed with our public hearings. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024, and the time being 7.04 p.m. The meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order. At this time, at this time, please silence all electronic devices. Amber, we please do a roll call. Alan. Here. Philip. Here. Ken. Dick. Here. Rick. Here. Okay. In our packets, um, we got a copy of last month's public hearing minutes and meeting minutes. Does anybody have any um, corrections or changes that, need, that you saw need to be made for these? No? 
Okay. Uh, at this time, I don't understand. At this time, I will take a motion to accept the hearing minutes and the meeting minutes as submitted. Second. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. As we have no old business, we will jump right into the two new business. Our first one would be um, Ag Experience, Travis Corman, 2340 North Progress Road, seeking variance for not having to pave and curve the parking lot. As you received in your packets, um, the uh, variance petition statement picture. Um, at this point, they just did pave the driveway and just up around the front part of the building um, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, you're looking for relief from curbing, that was only pavement, no curbing. And um, pavement on the red outlined area that you have in your packet, and then the future blue outlined area. If you don't have any questions for me, I'll have to try. Yeah, yep. Ben, yep. okay, come on up. Travis isn't here, so this has been McCoy? Yes. Mr. McCoy, is that M, small c, big c, a water? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, from this Google Maps picture we got, it looks like you're going to add a completely separate building to the back of yes. what you have now? Yes, that's the plan, yes. Did you talk about that when, when it, you plan to? There's no set time frame just yet. It's that was identified early on when we bought the property as to where the next expansion would be. Um, no timeline as of though, so. You talk about, I guess, like the number of people that you currently service or might use that parking lot at any given time and then you know once, once the phase two is completed you know. as far as like the front where we're paved already uh -huh. uh, in a given day you might get one or two people that come in otherwise everybody else's employees that parks up front there um what goes on in the back is all it's all heavy equipment heavy machinery combines tractors planters semi unload and load so that's really all that's back there Okay, do you have the whole driveway paved, the whole front driveway paved in the green outline? Yes. Now? Yes. When you talk about no curbs, you would mean no curbs at all, right? Including the paved section? Yes, correct. Your, um, or I guess Travis, I give the, the letter that was attached to the um, request, the variance request. Uh, I, I guess, and I, you know, I know you guys said uh, drainage is one of the issues, but why, why do you think that the curbing is not necessary for that? Because I would say that most of the drainage already happens on the sides right there by the road anyways. Curbing would probably only make it worse on the driveway itself. Right, no, I understand that. I guess uh, curbing is, is uh, maybe Sarah could speak to this some. Uh, is, is it aesthetic? Is it is it uh, safety? Safety, I mean, aesthetic, yeah. Right. Nice. Uh, so I, I guess from that perspective, I, you know, again, I get, I get the, the drainage issue. You know, maybe it's easier, but, um, but I guess I'd be more sympathetic to some of the paving, especially if you have a, have a plan in place to build spots but the, the curve I guess I have more issues with. 
I have an issue with not paving or not curbing the driveway because that's a very long driveway. And is it wide enough to get two vehicles down now? Yes. Side by side? Yes. Including all the large equipment you're talking about? The yes. Combine and the yes, it is. And I have a problem with no curbing up against the building being that with no curbing and it just stops anybody that has any kind of problem with uh, in the building or against the building. <laughs> well, Mr. Whitaker? Yeah. Can I, I'm going to, Travis isn't here, Ben's on the, from the, the development side of things. Uh, I built the place for him, so Travis the ground. So I want to make sure that you guys are aware of exactly what is going on there because there's more to it than that. First of all, the, des the design standards from the state of Indiana is to use ditches and swells where possible so that any contaminants that run off the pavement are filtered before it goes into retention ponds or the creek, which this is going into Mother Fork eventually, okay? So the, the ditches and swells we're putting, that carries it to the detention pond that is out there on Veterans Way, okay? And rather than curb that, driveway and all the way back and he's on 20 acres. He has a massive amount of absorption field himself. It's not like he's running off onto somebody or something else as far as parking curbs, parking bumpers. If I didn't know that they put those in. No, they did not. Okay, so that's neither here nor there, but that's totally separate than the curb along the drive, which the water runs into the swells and gets their pond. I just want to make sure you get were aware of that, what, what was going on there. So, and that is Indiana's uh, design preference to use natural drainage instead of curb and gutter is when you're doing pipe and pond because you have no other options. That's not the preferred method. They don't curb and gutter the interstates or anything else because they don't. And, it's, and from a safety standpoint, having a six inch stand up curb is not safer than no curb where you just drive off in the grass. So. And if I can say that may be the preferred Indiana design standard, the preferred, but we do have an ordinance that states parking lots will be curved, curved and paved. Well, I, I get it. I, I, I do understand that. But I'm just saying these guys need to be aware of what the state's preferred method is as a developer. That's your responsibility. If and when possible to use ditches and swells to filter the storm water before it goes into the uh, creeks. So at the end of the day. If you curb that, what would what would keep it from filtering once it got past the driveway? Say that one more time. If you could if you curb that all the way around at least the green part around well, where, the where where are you going to direct it to? It's going to probably direct it in, down the road, down the well, I know, but I mean, but if, if at, at that elevation, you would have to have down, you would have to have it run it down towards that the whole time. Uh, and the road is already curved. It's not, it's not, it, it's going into the pond, the detention basin, you know, via scuppers or whatever. But, you know, there's plenty of projects that have happened recently that curbing was omitted even by the city of Greensboro. Several new projects have eliminated the curb on their parking areas. Where would that be? Um, it would be at the new city garage. It would be at the new city uh, fire station. It would be at the new city water plant. All of them are missing a lot of curb. I got pictures, but everybody knows where they're at, so I don't know. We're not trying to get make something out of something for, for no good reason. It just doesn't. Well, we had 
to do to make the ditches and swells to take the water to the pump. So the water. Cool not run. It's, it's not run, it's running on the street. Dry. No, it's not running on the It's running in the ditches where it was intended to go. And then, you know, and all, and all that is, I mean, there's, you know, the, the, the more it gets filtered, the better at the end of the day. I mean, that's the whole point. Uh, you know, you want, uh, the contaminants that wind up on pavement, they go straight into the detention basins where everything's curved and guttered as it's concentrated. You know, that's what they don't want. But sometimes, um, sometimes it's not it's not possible to not do it that way. You know, but this already has the pond that the city's against. I donated land. They built the pond when they put veterans in. That pond is there to carry all this water. Trying to work out how to phrase this question because I don't know exactly. I don't know enough about this to. to Part what? Uh, but I would say you. Uh, you know, I if, you're, if you're directing with me or. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, no. You, okay. yeah, no, because I, I think you have as much of an interest in this area being developed as anybody. Uh, I'd say more than most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, I guess to me, the reason that you have some of these ordinances in place is to keep it at a certain. Level see, that, but the, here, okay, I, I get what you're saying. I understand I, I understand that fully what you're saying. But what's not taken into consideration is uh, a couple of things. There should never have been an ordinance that mandates paving on an entire project. Some people don't function on paving. Some businesses can't. That would be that would be saying. You don't have a problem with me getting in my D16 and driving it down here to get my permits. It just doesn't work. So you can't. You have to have, you know. And that's why there's a, a system in place where you can come in and request the variances. And I, I get it. I get it. You know, so, and, that, and I, I would have, you know, in my mind, there, but if in the ordinance it said uh, rather than a blanket, pay it and then go through this every time, it should have said under. Uh, certain businesses that require non-paved surfaces, stone must be put in place. You're not driving around on mud. Something that something that would work for the businesses that don't work on asphalt. At the end of the day, that's the, you know, so. so wouldn't the appropriate fix be to fix the ordinance as opposed to? Granting every variance that walks in? Not tonight, but the next time, you're absolutely right, 100%. Because the thing is this, this here's another thing. This is my, uh, uh, <coughs> this is my thing with it, is people have acquisition people all over the country that search for places to put things. If they go on your website and your ordinances say, we mandate paving everywhere, they're like, well, we're not dealing with that. We're, we're not going to go there. Are they going to call and say, oh, can we get a variance? Or are they just going to go on to the next step that doesn't have that? I, I'm just saying, to me, it's, it's a fair question. Online, okay. but there's a lot again, of people going online that don't go, don't pick the phone up. Right. And I think that's a fair question, but I think throughout the country, you also see lots of times where, at least as far as a judicial account says, yes. We agree that this is probably an ordinance that needs changed, yeah. but the process is to change the ordinance. It's yeah. not to simply give a variance to everybody who comes in and asks for one. They shouldn't give it to anybody that just comes and asks unless somebody's coming to ask to do mm -hmm. business with a business that cannot function on that school. That's my point. So yeah. and I guess I, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I guess what yeah. you're saying is that you're and I understand we're doing basically two at the same time because his request is the same as what the request for, for yeah, ag experience ag is, is that you have two businesses that, that can't or, sh or do not function well on pavement because of the wear and tear on the pavement and the cost that it would be to fix it. Well, there's no ordinance that says you got to redo it then. Well, I mean, if it stopped being paved, I mean, if, if it was crushed to a point that it was not no longer paved, I think well, it would be. I, but, I mean, but I think that's what you're saying, right? You're saying that you, these two businesses, because of the nature of the businesses, are unique, right. and that's what your request is. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
but there's a difference between Jeff's and his, because the only way you can get into yours is down the driveway, right? All the equipment coming in to be repaired or whatever, it's got to come down the drive. Well, eventually, I believe I was told by Travis that there's going to be another roadway that's going to come in off of Veterans Way there around the back. Potentially. Potentially. Potentially, if it were to work out that way. So, and I guess that would be, again, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to make sure I understand right. what you're requesting, Mr. Uh, McCoy, is you've already paved one portion of it, mm -hmm. which is appreciated, I believe, mm -hmm. but all of the, like every one of those vehicles that you've just identified that you can't possibly pave the back has to drive down your paved road. We can take right? them yeah, off the road. That's what I was getting at. We can take them it, off the road it. through the grass and okay. the back because it's not steep enough, it's not a deep enough because, ditch there. Because it doesn't have enough of a ditch and swell on the side that you can't possibly drive no, on. You couldn't drive, that's what I'm saying. It's okay. not unsafe to drive off into the grass. Okay. It's not so deep that it's like a, you know, you'll flip the car or something. Thank you, John. But they sure. also have access off of Moscow as well, too, and mm -hmm. with the track equipment. Possible to break this into two because you got the curbing as an issue, and then the paving of uh, the stone, everything past the green. Sounds like a Chris or Sarah question. Well, I mean, so so again, realistically, with any variance request, you're you're one have to make the necessary statutory findings that that the, that the variance is requested or that is requested. As I do think that you can craft your response in a way that is is in keeping with your findings. So, if, so for instance, the findings that you would have to find is that the variance won't harm the community's health, safety, and <coughs> general welfare. The variance won't negatively affect the value or use of the surrounding area. The variance is needed to do needed due to a unique condition of the property. And a strict application of the zoning ordinance would cause an unnecessary hardship for the property. So I think you could find that as it relates, you know, for example, that as it relates to the pavement, all of those criteria are met. As it relates to the request for relief from the curbing, maybe not all of those are maybe not all of those are met. And so therefore you're going to grant one, but not necessarily grant. Because although they're combined into one single variance, I do think you can piecemeal them out if you so choose. But you also don't have to. If you say, look, based on my reading of this, it doesn't meet that standard, I'm not doing it, that's certainly within your rights as well. Now, will, will that have to be two different votes on that if we... If you subdivide it, I would recommend that you, that you that you do two votes, yes. If you combine it, then then you're we can actually take it once. Can I speak for a second on the I was going to when Mr. McCoy was finished, I was okay. gonna ask the city. I I would like to ask so that the record reflects and the minutes reflect, I'd like to ask the city's position on this particular variance. So Mr. McCoy, if you if you're done speaking. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So I would ask that Sarah present the city's position, please, for the record. And the Just a few things um, I want to bring up is, first of all, our ordinance on curbing and paving is nothing new. It's been around for quite some time. Um, what we are trying to avoid is um, we have an ordinance that is in place for curbing and paving, period. Um, if you go and look out at Liberty Circle, around there, for whatever reason, it was before I was in this position, there were several parking lots out there that were not paved, and there was no reason why they shouldn't have been. And you go out there, and it, it, it just is, it does not look very nice. There's, there's gravel in the roads. It's just, it just doesn't look nice. 
So where do you draw the line of who should have to and who shouldn't? That's going to become the problem. And, you know, we have these ordinances in place for a reason. Again, it is not a new ordinance, and it's been around for quite some time. That's all I want to say. type of business there are big tractors tracks and stuff and it will tear the uh, asphalt up and if they can get through without going on the drive but still they've got to get I, <laughs> well, the drive's already paid so right. they're, they're locked right. in there right for that. but then he said he could you know, maybe use off road off road. So I, I, mm -hmm. Well, I guess I, to me, partly the use of this property. I mean, right now it's being used, you know, for for the folks that work out there and then repair on or bring in large equipment. But I think phase two is an event center for, and then other development in that um, Veterans Way area. I think we are trying as a community to attract all kinds of businesses that are going to bring in. shoppers, visitors, whatever, uh, I think we do want to maintain uh, a, a positive aesthetic, and I think that the, I guess I, I would be more sympathetic if it was just an agricultural business and they're just bringing in heavy equipment to say it doesn't need to be paved, and, and then I guess we can have a conversation about the curbing because I have some questions about that too, but, but I guess with phase two, we had a different, you know, I, I hate to say that they don't have to pave it, and then in two, three, four years, Phase two behind you're talking about behind the building being event center? No, it would not okay. be. It would be future hack space again, shop space for okay. the ag stuff. Okay. Uh, event center was an idea. I don't know where that stands anymore, but it, as far as I know, it hasn't been discussed now for two or three years. So. what drives on our roads every day. We have farm equipment that drives on our roads every day. We have fire trucks. We have dump trucks. We have trash trucks. Every day, they're out there. So we're going to get more on our road, city roads than what these parking lots are going to. Just a thought. I'd like to see a split if we could. So I guess I would ask that just so just so we have a clean record, I'd ask for a motion to split the vote on the variance between the two issues. I'll move to split the variance between the curbing and the paving of the back of the business. Second that. Amber, would you do a roll call, please? Philip. On his motion. Yes. On yeah, on this motion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. On his motion. Yes. Dick. Yes. Rick? Yes. Alan? Yes. So now that we have <coughs> basically two variances, we'll start with the paving one first. I will take a motion to grant the uh, paving variance. I'll take a motion. I'll second. saying is that just the paint part so this part the red the red yes and the, and the, and the blue yeah the and blue the so blue. Uh, blues. Uh, right okay yeah so you're moving you are moving to grant the variance to permit uh relief from the
paving ordinance as it relates to the area depicted in the red line and blue lines of the, the exhibit to the variance request. Yes. Okay. I'll let that one. Okay. And just so I'm clear. Also, uh, don't get the reader you do the roll call. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Philip. Yes. Dick. Yes. Rick. Yes. Alan. No. On the curbing, can we talk about that for a second? Is yes. it possible? Because what I would, and, and, well, maybe we need to bring the, the property owner back up. I, cause I, would, I guess I would, my preference would be that it look nice out on the road where people are driving by, people are thinking about going and using that business. You know, I'm not, I don't know that it needs to be curved all the way back. I mean, that's that's a pretty decent way off the, <coughs> the road. That's an opinion, man. Sure. It looks nice anyway, but it did look nice. And it works the way it's supposed to work, the ditches and swells, the areas are still more. Again, again how, does the, how does the city not have to follow these rules? I don't know the answer to that. Well, you got a whole board here that's writing down on Joe Public. Anybody question the city? Sarah, who said it was okay for the city not to do it? I don't you know, know that, but this is we're not, we're not going to start going to doing that, Mr. Yeah. Ricker. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, and I would ask that if you would please uh, have any further comment, if you would come up so it could be accurately reflected in the record. Yeah. Um, yeah. I understand your I understand your question, but that is not the variance request that is in front of this board right now. I, I know. I know. No question. Okay, I will take a motion to grant relief from uh, the curbing of the already paved part of this driveway. Okay. Sounds right. I make a motion. Second. Amber, will you please do a roll call? Philip. Oh, we have a minute. Discuss that amongst ourselves. But I don't know that I, I don't how do you, how, how do you two feel about that? We really don't want to see the Kirby. That's just my. With the business, yeah, I know we've got ordinances, but we got exceptional businesses with the equipment and stuff. Huh? Day. It looks very nice. I think it looks great with curbs. Well, I, and I guess I go back to I don't know that I want to say that you have to because 150 feet. I don't know that you need 150 feet of curbing, but I I'd like for it to be curbing out there on the. <coughs> yeah, that does not front down on Veterans Way though. That's off of Sign Road. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So you currently have a motion to grant relief from curbing from the already paved portion of the driveway. Amber, will you do roll call? Is it possible to table that and ask them to come back with some kind of design that? Well, uh, you certainly couldn't do it with a motion right. and a second on the floor. Right. Okay. Well, then I'm mm -hmm. trying to vote. Uh, or you do a roll call? Sorry. If there's no further questions. Motion been made, seconded, and voted down. I 
do think that if you, because you have broken the variance into two pieces and you have granted a portion of the variance, I do think if you wanted to, if the, if you wanted to permit the um, the owner to or the owner's representative to make a, another variance request related to that curbing with a plan of what it would look like or you know again give I think I think it is appropriate for you to give <coughs> insight to the individual that is seeking the variance as to what you would like to see um, I'm sorry so I mean I, I do think if you <coughs> if you as a body want to make that that comment you certainly can the problem is you can't table the issue because now you've voted right. up and, and, and down. Right. Um, but I do think you could ask to have it replaced on the next month's agenda to give the opportunity for additional information or evidence uh, and to potentially reconsider that request. Um, I mean, I tell you, if, if, if you have three tag, if you're interested in doing that, I would point that out. Do you have it sealed or not? You ready for the next one? The next one is. Lisa Lee for uh, special exemption to run business out of her home on Lakeshore Drive. Yes, Lisa is here this evening uh, seeking a special exception to operate a one chair hair salon out of her home at 1018 East Lakeshore Drive. We'll have her come up for if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Um, is there going to be any sign or anything out front? No. Uh, are you planning on having like more than one at a time, customers in at a time? Um, I probably do like six or seven a day. There might be Oh, some overlap, passing. but nothing. Yeah, maybe there might be one or two at the time, but no more. So plenty of parking for yes, I just double driveway, plenty of parking. Get down. Anybody else have any questions? I have more to Sarah. Have you had any uh, responses from the neighbors? No, I have not received any responses. I will say I live in the same neighborhood, not a highly traveled roadway, Lakeshore Drive. She does have ample parking. Um, okay. I've never seen an issue with a large number of vehicles there for. Business. Now, would she have to come back in a year to get this? Um, it doesn't say in the um, UDO that they do now. Uh -huh. um, I'll have to I'll look into that just a little bit more just to, to see. Normally, in the past, they've gotten, like, you get a temporary special exception for a year. And as long as we don't receive more complaints and stuff like that, then you come back in a year to get your permanent special exception. I'll let you know on that. But I'll double check that. Anybody else have any questions? I will take a motion to grant this special exception. So moved. I'll second. Amber, please do roll call. Philip. Yes. Dick. Yes. Rick. Yes. Alan. Yes. Thank you. Okay, our third one is for Hempstead. This is the variance for development standard for front yard setback at 706 West Gaston. Yes, um, Connie Hempstead is here this evening uh, requesting a variance. Um, back, I don't know, here recently she had a concrete pad um, extended off of her front porch and now she is. Um, seeking a variance to be able to put a roof over that because that does not meet the 20-foot setback from the front property line. Uh, the concrete pad is already there. Um, she is just wanting to 
to put a roof over that, which would attach, I believe, to yes. a roof on her house. We'll attach so the house. I'll let her come up and <coughs> ask her question. Here's a, I don't know, see if you guys can look at, at the yes. house. Um, it's been mighty hot out there on that concrete slab this summer, and I was hoping to add a, I'm kind of in the middle of the project, um, got the slab there, and then I wanted to put the roof over top of it attached to my house so that it looks like um, it was made with the house, and um, found out that I needed some permission to do that. Um, ignorance is um, not an excuse, <laughs> but, but I did not know that when I started the project. So um, I'm asking for that permission to put that roof over top, and then I've already got a landscaper um, that's going to come in and then landscape the rest of the yard afterwards so it can all be nice so you're so this roof is going to kind of match the house absolutely looks, looks like yes looks like it was built that way yes that that was the plan and that's my builder's plan to attach it to the current roof and extend it out like it was there from the beginning well just be a roof with posts i mean you're not putting walls up like no walls just post just a covering over the top just like looks like probably extension of the current one. Of the current, per, of the, the current, porch now. yeah, porch, roof. Mm -hmm. If I have any questions. Would she have needed to do, get a permit to pour the concrete, or is she only need permission because there's a roof going over it? Well, yes, we, we talked about that, but she's in the right spot now getting what she needs to get, so. And that's not covering anything, I guess, water or electric? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I had all that checked out. There's nothing in my front yard. Okay. Absolutely nothing. Okay. That guess. yard looks like a paintball war when you bring out the utility people. The front yard has nothing. Uh, any complaints, concerns from David? No. I will take a motion to grant assist variance for, from the development standards. For this property. So moved. I'll second. Amber, can we please do a roll call? Philip? Yes. Dick? Yes. Rick? Yes. Alan? Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, our next one is for special exception to operate warehouse type business in a B2 zoning. And the address is 1927 North Greensburg Crossing, and that would be the old tractor supply spot. Yes. Um, this evening we have uh, Chris Nutley with Midwest Service Warehouse um, Incorporated uh, with us to answer some more questions. He's, uh, they're wanting to put a uh, warehouse type business in a B2 Chris, you want to come up, but just kind of as a temporary kind of thing, hopefully. Correct. So I'm going to let you answer all the questions of exactly what it is. Hi, I'm Chris Nutley, uh, president of MSW Midwest Service Warehouse. Um, the special use variance request is to utilize the space that is currently zoned for retail for a light industrial packaging operation warehousing space. Um, we currently operate, MSW has two facilities, Lawrenceburg, Greendale, where we've been there 33 years. We've been at Batesville for nine years now. We have a planned expansion of Batesville, but that's about two years out. Uh, so this is a temporary usage for expansion of our operation. Um, work with the owner of the property to set up usage for that space. And it's primarily warehousing. We may do a little bit of packaging uh, in that facility. Our, our core business is uh, food and beverage packaging. Uh, but in this 
situation, we would only be using it for um, no open food, so non-contact. Everything would be retail ready, closed packaging. <laughs> all be dry goods or will it be frozen goods? All be dry. Dry goods. Temperature controlled, so we'll be right. utilizing the air conditioning that's in the building. But no freezers? No. Okay. How many trucks would you expect a day? In and out? Um, probably four to five. And there are two docks there now, correct? That's correct. Two shifts? Yes. Would there be any, would this be live load, live unload? It would be live load, live unload. So you wouldn't have any trailers parked around anywhere? No. The two shifts, we operate three shifts. Um, the, our, we run 10 hour shifts on Monday through Thursday. Uh, we run two 10 hour shifts Monday through Thursday and we run a Friday, Saturday, Sunday shift. Right now it's not been determined whether we would utilize the day shift on Monday through Thursday and then day shift Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's not been determined. How many employees do you have per shift? Between four and twelve. For this operation, for this usage. So it would be a pretty steady four or five trucks in a day? Yes. Probably a little heavier on Monday. We typically don't ship over the weekends, so things will get busy on Monday. Anybody have any questions on this one? Sir, have you, I'm guessing you sent out letters to everybody? Yes. Did you get any responses? No. No, um, no one's called with any concerns or anything, so. The property owner <coughs> has, uh, obviously it's a retail space, so the desire was to seek retail usage, yeah. but it's been sitting empty for a while, so we did negotiate a uh, early exit scenario so that if they do get a business who's interested in putting a using that facility for at least they said uh, standard to be a three year or more so if they get someone to retail three years or longer then we have an early exit clause that we would leave in 180 day notice and you and this would be a temporary until you got your page bill that's correct and expansion then okay. that's correct do you know how long two years out at least we're we've negotiated three year okay. um, but early exit okay. any other questions now we grant this one does it revert back then after they leave to the retail okay. yes yes so you're, you're granting a special exception for the this business okay. so it would not so the business change so if the business so the, so if the business yeah. changed and you know they got yeah. into their Batesville plant sooner and another similar warehousing uh, company wanted to come in and utilize the space they would also have to come ask for a special exception in accordance with the, the individual asking it no Sarah again we talked earlier is this going to be reviewed after a year or is that up to us to call yeah, no, that's, that's um, actually, it's kind of more of a use variance. Um, okay. It's not necessarily a special exception. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that make it. Okay. I would take a motion to grant, to grant this use variance. I'll move. Second. Amber, will you please do a roll call? Philip. Yes. Dick? Yes. Rick? Yes. Alan? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, our last one for tonight is basically the same as our very first one, but this one will be from Mr. Whitaker mm -hmm. on a property at 1530 Veterans Way.
Do you have this building rented out or leased out, or are you going to use it? Leasing it to McAllister. Are they moving their operation over there? From Boots. Yes. What kind of business is that? I'm not familiar with them. McAllister? Yeah. Uh, they rent construction equipment, dozers, excavator, scissor lifts. They've been in the community. They were here when Honda was built. Leasing to Honda scissor lifts. They had, Honda had probably 400 lifts between Callisters and United Rental out there. And they, they've been here ever since, but they decided to uh, do something on a permanent basis. So, so they have steel track. This is the, the, the it's about 17,000 yeah, asphalt. And, uh, it's all broken down on that that I gave you guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah.